So what do I mean by the secret spells of the English language? Well, let me share with you what I call our premier life sentence. And it goes something like this. We awake each morning and go off during the weekdays to earn the living at various jobs and undertakings until we come to the weekend. And this seems perfectly acceptable to most people. However, more people die between six and nine on a Monday morning than any other time of the week. So I do what I call a translation of the English language, and I spell that T-R-A-N-C-E with the idea that words cast spells. So when you translate that life sentence, you remember that awake is a funeral party for the dead. Morning is the state you're in when you attend awake. And you would have to be in a week days to earn the living, since urns are for the ashes of the dead. We call our jobs undertakings. Job itself is a Hebrew word for persecuted. And what we get at the end of this perverse bargain with life is the weak end of the deal as we become progressively weakened ourselves. And so our most prevalent greeting to each other is hello, the reverse of which is, oh, hell. And at first, I suspected the hands of collusion entangling the language to foster illusion. And I think it's quite true that a culture's theology has a great deal to do with a word's etymology and how it evolves over time to combine incompatible meanings that may undermine the original thoughts it was meant to define. But now, I don't think it's planned, for the thing that I've found is that like concepts can gravitate toward the same sound and vibrate at the rate that our thoughts designate. Because words are electromagnetic vibrations whose fine alphabetic tintinabulations can take on the tint of our true expectations, <laughs> which they then imprint on our metal of mind, causing sounds to adhere when they're of the same kind. <laughs>